This is JSA TV, your virtual newsroom for telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine and welcome to JSA TV. With us today we have Mr. Paul Belk. Paul is the president and CEO of North Georgia Networks, or NGN. Paul, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you, Dean. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, let's get started. Um, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about NGN and your service offerings for carriers? Well, NGN is a, uh, a carrier in northeastern Georgia. Uh, we are a network that was built in order to deal with the rapid growth of the, the state of Georgia to the northeast. Uh, we have a very large 1,600 miles of fiber optic network that effectively is in the western Carolina and northeast Georgia corridor. So we, um, we provide carrier services throughout that region. What areas does NGN's network cover? Well, yeah, to be more specific, uh, NGN's coverage, it, it comes from, if you, well, I'm trying to be familiar with uh, North Georgia, there, a lot of folks are familiar with the 400 corridor, the 365 and 85 corridors. All of these corridors represent an area where um, Georgia's gone, undergone a, a lot of growth. NGN has built into these corridors and they go northwestward into that area. We also have repurposed or at least a part of the purpose of NGN is to bring broadband into rural areas of northeast Georgia which are not really that far from the Atlanta metro area. So we serve the far reaches or the, the corners of northeast Georgia and western North Carolina. Uh, we also reach out to the South Carolina border where we can meet other carriers to provide those services. What differentiates NGN from other networks? NGN was built for 10 years in advance. We, when we uh, went ahead and made the capital investments for NGN, we wanted to make sure that we were equipped for 100 gig and above. So our back planes are in upwards of uh, four terabytes at, at this point right now, and we intend to fill all of that capacity up, but we've barely reached even a, a scratch the surface of the, of the level of capacity. So our ability to provide services to very um, hungry data applications is, is we're equipped to do that. So what differentiates us is, is, is that when a carrier comes to us and says, I need 100 gig to a location, our standard offerings, even to a consumer premise, is equipped with nothing less than a gigabit to the to the premise. So that's really what we did not design anything for what we call traditional TDM offerings or things that were scaled below 100 meg. Everything that we offer is equipped to do gigabit connectivity. There have been a lot of NGN announcements recently. Can you update our viewers on your interconnection agreements? Well, NGN continues to make strategic decisions with its neighbors. Um, and uh, when we look at our region and securing uh, all of the, the core anchor institutions, universities, everything that really requires uh, live and up, you know, uptime being 24-7, 365, we needed to make sure that not only did we go into the heart of Atlanta in order to pick up our IP peering arrangements, but we also needed to go up the eastern seaboard and we needed to go into the Midwest, into Chicago, where, you know, this is where all these networks come together. The way that we were able to do that was there's, there's three in particular that are, are critical to us. To the north uh, west, we have Iris Networks, where Iris Networks is very, um, they're very complete in the in the Tennessee footprint, but they also go up into the the Midwest and the Kentucky and, and those areas, and eventually make it into Chicago. The other piece is is that we have uh, Lit Networks, which is a compilation of about twelve, excuse me, around seven carriers that go up the Appalachian corridor into Ashburn, Virginia, and that gets us to D.C. Um, we have uh, the last one is the um, Balsam West gets us into the um, Knoxville market, and um, that really is going to give us access to the Oak Ridge National Laboratory where we feel like some high data needs are going to be met. 
You have recently been named president of the Fiber Network Owners Alliance. Tell us a little bit about FNA and your new role. Well, the FNA, you know, I could be more excited about an organization like this. Um, you know, all types of carriers are required in order to make the proverbial, you know, world go round when it comes to carriers. And what, what that means is, is that small and large, medium, all of them. And the FNA is a, an alliance, just as it says, Fiber Network Owners Alliance. And the reason why we came together is it is a collection of companies, uh, primarily at this point in the southeast, but we're, we've grown into 70,000 route miles of medium-sized carriers that have put themselves together in order to create, you know, a very competitive environment for, you know, larger carriers, quite honestly. So we have gotten together with other carriers that have less than $100 million in assets and said, if we are to survive and be competitive in today's highly competitive environment with uh, the very large box stores, if you will, of the telecom world, we're really going to have to work together uh, to bring our respective communities uh, the services that they need. So I'm very excited about the direction of the Fiber Network Owners Alliance, and I'm thrilled to be serving as president, the inaugural president. It's great. Thank you very much, Paul, and thank you viewers for watching JSA TV. See you next time.